How are you doing? If you're like most of us, you're coping with uncertainty and uncertainty feels uncomfortable. We thought this was the perfect time to go within ourselves and connect with spirit and go to some of our trusted Seeking Center guides to also connect with messages from beyond for right now. To help us all get through these next few months and tap into what to do during any uncertain time in your life. The messages received across the board not only blew us away, but changed us and our thinking profoundly. And we think they will help bring peace and hope to you as you navigate the road ahead. Hi, Karen. Hi, Robin. I'm feeling uncertain. (laughs) I'm just saying what everybody else is thinking right now. So you're welcome. So true, Karen. The energy right now feels heavy. It feels frenetic. It feels intense. It really does. I was thinking this morning how Seeking Center is just such a great name for our podcast, for everything that we're trying to bring to the world, because I think that's what everybody is really looking for right now. And really not knowing where to turn, really not knowing what to listen to. So I'm glad we're opening up this conversation and being really real about it, while also just trying to be the seekers that we are. And really ask those questions because we've always said, we don't know. We're just always trying to bring together people that will help give us direction, help inspire us and let us know that we're not alone. And help us make sense of why we are where we are right now. That I think is the other part. We're always looking for the signs and the validation and we can find so many of those answers within ourselves if we stop and listen and We also have this other source that we've found over the years is the energy, is the unseen world in the most positive of ways. We believe, we always have these teams around us. They're all rooting for us. They all want it to work out because at the end of the day, we're souls living in these human bodies and we came here for a reason at this moment on this earth right now. It's true. All of that said, though, I think that there's moments, even though so many of us have been practicing all of that work, when the noise gets really loud, it's really hard to put our headsets on over our ears and not hear it and not feel that energy all around us. And I know for many of us, we're in work places or we're living in families or in experiences where there's so much diversity of thought. And I think many of us want to try to balance that scale out. Many of us don't feel the black and white of what's right, what's wrong. That's right. That's right. We're just trying to find that middle ground. And I think that's why I keep coming back, even my own self to what is seeking center? What does that mean? How can I do that authentically? And how do I navigate this? What can I learn? as I'm going through this experience and people are asking me. I just appreciate you bringing that up because so true. And you're right. Even when you have this greater belief, it's very easy to get caught up in fear, in the not knowing, which again leads to feeling scared. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there is the human part of us. That is why we're here to be and experience these things. And hopefully as you stated so well, is help people seek center, seek their center, seek center together, and for us to create a seeking center. Mm -hmm. So we feel grateful because number one, we've been able to tap into our spirit teams to get some insight. And then we've been able to tap into the people that we trust and their spirit teams. That's right. We can bring messages to help everybody navigate what is ahead of us at the moment. Mm -hmm. And again, so much of what we received can be used really at any time. Yeah. And I think to remind people all the time is that this is a being in the present moment opportunity. Every day, you're going to have a different challenge from either something that you're seeing or a conversation that you may have. We keep having the conversation around, remember... That's why we're here. It's all about that contrast and asking questions and feeling that fear. And how do you navigate and bring that back to really why we're here, which is to try to amplify 
love and understanding and connection with people. And I really do feel as we listen to all of these incredible people that we've talked to, that has been the thread that we keep hearing is that, yes, we don't know everything. That is the point. But look for the love, look for the opportunity to meet people where they are and learn. None of us are right or wrong. That's really not the point. It's really about tapping into authentically, what do I believe? What can I learn? And how do I stay above that fear? That's really why we're here. It is. And I think what you and I have talked about in these days leading up to posting this is that we also know that people feel very passionately about mm-hmm. their beliefs. Yes. And we applaud you for having the beliefs. Those are your beliefs. And if you can also leave a little bit of room to listen, it's just about being open to listening to somebody else. Because as you said, we are all here from light and love. We're here to teach each other these lessons. And ultimately, right. if you can have faith, and you can hang on. And I know that's the part that's hard when you feel the fear. When you feel fear, it's hard to get out of that fear energy because what you focus on expands. And the more you focus on fear, the more you focus on divisiveness, the more of that you're going to get. But if you can pull out of that, even for a few minutes, you might be really surprised at what you may be able to then start attracting if you can just be open and look at people as as souls. Yes. And I think one piece of advice that's always landed with me is that even though we all do it, worrying is such a waste. It's a waste of very important energy that we can make the choice to use differently. So how do we make the choice of, yes, we're uncertain, yes, perhaps fearful, but how do we make choices that brings us back to that power of what love can actually do. And I think I love what you said too about being understanding of people's passions. If you look at every single person that's out there with a very loud voice right now, they are really passionate about something. I think that they're coming from a place of love in many cases. So I love turning that thought on its head a little bit, even if I disagree with it and trying to say, what is it that makes them so passionate about how they feel and how can we potentially learn from this and meet each other halfway? How do we come together, seek center in bringing together this collective to support that versus look at where our differences are? And so these conversations for me, I feel so much better. I feel so much more aligned with whatever happens and I'm not as fearful of the uncertainty. I'm more open and almost welcoming whatever opportunity it can have for all of us to grow and see it for that and see it for the hope and optimism that that can actually bring to us. Yeah. And I just want to say that we are more alike than we are different. And that is really important to keep in mind. And what we have found and you will find by listening to all of these different conversations that we've had that In the end, no matter what, we are going to be okay. And there's a point, there's a bigger picture that we all can't see right now. And no matter what, we're going to be okay. So we want to just start out by saying that. And before we jump into all these snippets of wisdom and guidance is that you and I took a moment to really Mm -hmm. tap in. And as Karen said, there's a thread throughout. And Mm -hmm. what we both found in the messages that we received is this idea of having faith of really having faith. And we know sometimes that can feel scary in itself. And yet if you choose that and you choose to know there is greater good in no matter what, things will feel easier because there is a harder road and there's an easier road. And it's your choice, even though you may not realize it, you have a choice in which way you want to go, ultimately all leading to the same destination. It really doesn't matter how we get there. You're going to get there. And the other thing that I want to say is that you are more powerful than you give yourself credit for. We are all these beings of light and we can tap into the light and don't give your power away to somebody else just because they're louder or just because they feel scarier. Remember that you can look at your own light and you have the power to take care of yourself and then end up being a guide for others. So we received a lot more than that, but that's the essence I know of what I received. It's so funny. We say this all the time, how we could both go off in our own separate directions and just do a little meditation and get a download. And we come back 
with this same kind of message. And faith is a weird word I know for some people because it does imply religion and all the things with it. But for me, in this case, it feels very personal. Faith does boil down to your personal choice on what you want to believe. And it is very empowering in that way. Faith isn't divisive in that sense. When you look at it in that way, it's really where I want to be. It's above what I see. It doesn't rely on other people to have it in my heart and mind. It doesn't force me to pick a side at all. It just allows me to believe that all is well and can be well. And it gives me a better choice than fear. We always say faith over fear. This is a time when things are uncertain and it can be really hard to know what we believe, but it all comes back to seek that center of who you are and allowing yourself to be open to any person that you meet, anything that you hear. Lean in and be part of the collective. Lean in and take this opportunity to learn and be more than just your own soul and potentially connect with those that are, I believe, are also looking for each other to belong and feel strength in the good of what we can be in the world. That feels good. It does feel good. And it is such a better hat to wear than uncertainty and fear. And I think it's what we're being called to do. If we really put everything aside. Absolutely. And these mantras that we talk about, we've talked about them throughout many podcasts. I know throughout downloads that have come to me that I share in the weekly newsletter, which is faith over fear and love over fear, which you just brought up. And if you can keep those mantras in your mind, as you go through the next week, the next month, the next few months, whenever you need it, sometimes I need to say those things to myself many times in one day, faith over fear, love over fear. There's something in the frequency of those words that will help bring you back to center and will help you get through the next minute, the next hour, the next day. So remember those love over fear, faith over fear. It's like medicine, I swear. Hold on, hold up. I literally wrote that in here. Trust in your vibration of love that it is the world's medicine. This is- Oh my God, that's so crazy. What we're downloading, it's frequency. It's like we're tuning into a radio station and we're hearing the music play. We're hearing a song and we're just writing down what songs we're hearing. I swear to God. I believe that. Really, yes. My last line is show the way by being open, by following the light and by having faith. How is that possible? We both got the same freaking We really did. The last thing I just want to say is to remember too, we don't have to stand up to stand for something. We don't have to raise a flag. If you feel called to do that, yes, you you can. But you can be just as powerful being the light that is you. And that can help infuse all of the diversity with such unity. And in this time when maybe you don't know what to do, just allow yourself to just be who you are, to be the light that you are, and just send the energy of unity to all of us. I really believe we can get there. I think this is just a moment in time that's just having us question things that we may have never thought about before, but that the ultimate end result on the other side can it be about us coming together as human spirits? I really love, that's where we all started. So that is my wish as we move forward. And I thank all the people that we talk to and who you'll be hearing from who really got me there. Me too. <laughs> we're so excited. So we're going to start with our go-to astrologer and one of our soul sisters, Stevie Kalista. Stevie, what are you getting in terms of messages for people to know right now? Everybody breathe. <laughs> and <laughs> if we really zoom out, we are in the birth canal of the age of Aquarius. And so it doesn't really matter who wins. Like I, I know it matters, right? It matters in some ways, but energetically in the very, very big picture, I promise you, no matter who wins this election and whoever side you're on, what the truth of the matter is going to come to the surface, right? Because birthing the age of Aquarius is really all about unity consciousness. In November... And in December and in January and in February and in March and in April, we have Mars opposite Pluto. So this is usually like a six day situation and it's a very long situation. Oh my goodness. Months. Because Mars will be retrograding 
from December to February. So let me just back up. Mars is like our action, our drive, how we move forward, our masculine energy. Pluto is all about collective and individual soul transformation and change, essentially. Finding the root shadow of something and understanding why this happens and then transforming it like the phoenix. So we're being pulled in this direction to really make a change. It feels like the birth canal of the age of Aquarius because Pluto right now is in Capricorn at the last degree, which is very hurry up. And he's going to be moving into Aquarius in late November after the election. And he will be staying there for the rest of this lifetime. And this is a moment where we're really trying to find balance with what needs to come collectively with humanity so that we can really come together and create unity consciousness. So no matter who wins this election, we are still going in the same timeline, if that makes sense. We're still traveling through the universe in a lighter place than we were before, which means the darkness will come to light. And what we are all going to see it from a very big picture lens is that these two candidates, they're not the puppeteers. There are people above them that are pulling the strings. And we're going to start realizing this over the next few years. And really, this birth canal period is for us to understand like where we've lost our authority from ourselves. It's all about turning inward and finding your own inner authority and not necessarily looking outward to find safety, to find security, that if this person wins, life's going to be better. Absolutely not. If life is going to be better for us collectively, we have to turn it inward and take different action to transform ourselves. That's the Mars-Pluto combination. So this literally could mean something as simple as just choosing a different thing, it's choosing something better for you, making a healthier choice, sitting with yourself by a tree and loving yourself. I know these sound so simple, but this is really the work that will transform humanity together collectively. It's inner work, not outer work. So I just want to say, don't stress. I promise if Trump wins, it's going to be probably a little bit more disruptive. That's what he's here to do. His sole purpose is to shake the system up. And if Harris wins, it might go a different route, but it doesn't matter. The end result is the same. And the system is so broken. Don't let that play into us creating a new future for ourselves and humanity. Do the inner work and don't look outer to find your authorities or feel safe. None of this is going to save us. Like we save us. I needed to hear this today. So did I. I love how you put that. Somebody said to me the other day that we're all drops of water in the river. And so we have to remember that we can only be responsible for our drop and we are contributing to the health and flow of the river. Thank you, Stevie. Those words have changed me. They have given me such peace and calm and Hopefully they'll do the same thing for you. I think from an astrology perspective, we always feel like that could be our little morsel of concrete to anchor us to something tangible. And I think that Stevie really gave us that and gave us the confidence that we're going to get through it. That's exactly. It. So now we're talking to another love of ours, another soul sister, Elizabeth Furis. What messages are you receiving or that you would want to share for mm -hmm. people right now and how to deal with these uncertain times. The message that I keep getting around it, which doesn't even only apply to this time, but anytime there is chaos, especially external chaos, or when things look a certain way, is to truly bring all of our spiritual energy, all of our energy into present time and truly ground. And so when we can go quiet with ourselves and pause and take a moment and separate, okay, there's these things that are playing out or seemingly playing out, but our responsibility is how do we participate in that? How do we show up? How are we affected? So when we're present and we can collect all of our energy into this moment, the greatest thing that we can do is just be in our own light. And so that's true with any healing work. That's true with any situations. It's even if you're like, I have a hard conversation to have later this afternoon, or I'm waiting to hear an outcome of something later in this week. The work in that time, because it's not our job ever to manipulate energy or to manipulate outcomes, but it's the most ethical form to be in our highest and brightest, most authentic light. That's always been the most healing energy that anyone could choose. So things could be happening externally, but if you're like my greatest joy and my light is the purest when I'm walking my dog or I'm gardening or I'm having a friend over for tea, it's taking that light and the love that's generated and the high frequencies that are generated in those moments and continuing to expand on it. So you could be in a whole world of darkness or a world of confusion or a world of uncertainty. And it's never about fighting that or combating it or asking it why that only makes it bigger, but to say, okay, 
I'm just going to show up in the brightest light I can be and then just wait until it all shakes out. Mm -hmm. And I think the visual or the tool for people is to just take a few deep breaths and anchor themselves into the exact moment that they're in. And maybe it's running present time of saying it's 12, 18 PM when I'm in Northern California, or it can just be like, I'm in this room or by this tree or with my cat. And it's bringing all of that energy into the moment and then taking your light and expanding it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And the more you can keep doing that, and the way that Ram Das says it is find your ember and keep blowing on it. And if everyone was in their ember and shining their light, the world would have so much more peace. I'm going to cry. That is so beautiful. And again, it brings us back to our own power that we can contribute to the collective good. That's it all good. starts with us. And if you think of the ripple effect, if I showed up in my light and then I'm talking to a stranger or a friend or anyone and that light radiates out to them and then they're inspired to be in their light. It's like thinking about plugging in just strings of lights. It starts with one bulb that radiates down the circuit through that strand, through another strand until the whole vibration is a higher frequency. And I think one of the fallacies especially when there's so much uncertainty on a very large or like collective plane is people will default into saying what I think doesn't matter or what I do doesn't matter. And that's the exact opposite thing. Being in your own light is actually the most potent thing that anyone could do. And it matters more than anything. It's historically and everything that we've known, how cultures, just radical things historically that have changed because people choose to be in their light and to hold in that. Just taking responsibility and accountability for your light. And we've said this actually a lot over the last few days, how as you're in your own light, it takes nothing to light somebody else up. So as you're saying, it just contributes to everybody else and it doesn't take away from your light. And I would say too, in just the terms of energy, it's equally as hard to stay dim. It's equally mm -hmm. as much effort to say, oh, I don't want to do anything or stay complacent. Being complacent or not caring is just the same amount of energy of being like, I'll just run my light. It's the exact same energy. So you might as well choose that light because not only does that frequency bring healing on a cellular level to the body, but it changes how we think. It generates more positive thoughts, which puts out more positive thoughts to others. It changes our emotional body to feel better. And when our emotional body feels better, we feel stronger and better physically. So even people who are like, I don't have a number, I don't have a light, I might feel dim, keep radiating it through the body and envision it coming out of your out of the feet out of the top of the head, and it will continue to glow and grow and then it radiates and it really is what influences sometimes major movements and major consciousness shifts. And going back to that visualization of blowing on the ember. So even if you aren't feeling empowered right now, or maybe a little less than bright in your light, you have that power to be able to blow on that ember. I love that. And there's just hundreds of examples of people, one person standing in their light that shifted an entire culture. I needed the reminder actually of how powerful we all are and the light that is within us. That is beautiful. I think of animals, cats and dogs all day long are just in their light and you don't see them working hard at it. They could be laying in the sun. They could be chasing the tennis ball. They're just purely in their light. They're not working hard at it. It's just a natural state of being. But as humans, we have these overdeveloped minds and prefrontal cortices that tell us, how do I know that's possible? How do I know I'm doing it? What if it doesn't work? But it's quiet the mind, open the heart, and just envision being just pure light, whether it's white light or gold or light pink, whatever resonates. And that light will radiate out. It's a quantum law. And it brings healing. It brings peace and it allows us to detach from things that we cannot control and give ourselves inner peace while then radiating that out to give the gift of inner peace to others. In my energy medicine practice, we'll find that when I'm working with someone who is going through a lot of trauma or they are in a lot of physical pain, or let's say it's someone who's in a coma or they're undergoing surgery and they can't consciously run their own light. They can't access a meditative state or like that intentional space. The other visual that I can hold for them or gift them is you don't have to work hard at running your own energy. It's not something that finding your light is something you have to access and then necessarily amplify, but you can call it in as if it's a golden sun above the top of your head or even a waterfall and allow yourself to just fill up with that light. 
And that way it's all around you. It's naturally who we all are, but it's not something that needs to be, that we have to take a lot of effort to do. It's just knowing that at any time be filled up with our own energy. It's, if we go outside and stand in the sun, we're not all going to be like, are you getting the sun? I got it. Are you getting it? Are you getting vitamin D? We just know there's this natural energy, this nourishment that's available if we just hold the intention that may we receive all the divine perfection of our own light. I love the being able to call it in. That's something I haven't really even thought about. That even if we're not feeling it, we have that choice and that ability to be able to do that. That's empowering too. Oh, absolutely. In the case of people who maybe don't know what it means or they can't visualize what it is to run their own energy, run their own light. And I gave the example of maybe someone who's in surgery or someone who's at, at a distance in a different time zone, we can hold the intention of may they be filled up with their own divine light. And that's the power of prayer. And there's no prayer that goes unanswered. And so in these energetic realms, when you send energy, even to a group of people, may this group of people or may this country be filled with its own divine light. It's the most ethical way of healing because we're not saying, may we shift their outcome, may it go the way I want it to go, but may they have all the healing and all the light that is meant for them that could put them on their highest and best path. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I now can't stop doing what she said, which was imagining my light and having that come out of me and spread. That is so powerful. Like we talked about at the top of this, Karen, where we both received some of these messages about standing in our own power and our power being our light. And mm -hmm. I can't stop doing it now. Since we had that conversation a few days ago, I have been doing this all day. So I could be standing in line at the grocery store and I'm picturing my light and having it going out into the rest of the supermarket <laughs> in the world. We can all do that. It's where we can control. It's that one place of control that we can have of shining the light from that inside out. And if we just start there, it's almost like we're going to be breathing different air as we move through the planet. Here's one other thing I love to do too, which reminds me of what Elizabeth said, which is if you can feel that light and love within you, imagine like these little bubbles of love trailing off behind you and that are going to be connecting with other people. I always just love to believe that I can share that outwardly and that somebody else will be able to step into it. Just try it. See what happens. Yes. And now we're talking to another soul sister, tarot therapist, Michelle Nolan. I feel like a lot of people are struggling in their personal life and then it's showing up in the collective of letting go of what they still are gripping to as safety, as security, as something that they understand and know and put so much value on being loyal to that, that they're questioning where their loyalty is right now to themselves for the change that they're trying to accomplish. And it's been, at least for my clients, I've noticed that thread and then meditating on that for the collective is questioning how you really break something completely apart and rebuild without holding on to anything that feels safe to you anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is a really hard thing for people to do. It's hard for me to do. It's hard for my clients to do. And there's a struggle. It's been repetitive in the last couple months with the people I've been seeing individually. They just keep saying how uncomfortable they are. They're just really uncomfortable. And I keep repeating that statement that change is uncomfortable. You yeah. know, we don't want it to be comfortable. If it's comfortable, then you're not changing. Then it's not changing. And then collectively, the whole thing isn't shifting. But I do think there is a strange perspective filter that's a little bit rose colored right now of people thinking that they know more than they do. And I just don't think that's true. Yeah. Or that one outcome or another is going to serve them and be safer. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. ways all is changing right now, regardless of whatever the outcome is. And so mm -hmm. what I hear you say is get right with yourself. Get loyal with yourself. Get yeah. Get right with, with your, get whole with where yourself. your loyalty is lying for not, I see, this is the part where that gets confusing. I think not the loyalty to something that you've been used to that feels good right now. The loyalty is in where do you want to go, which is a very different thing. Because when we ask that question of ourselves, if we are loyal to this and committed to the change we want to make or where we want to be in the future, that usually goes against 
what we're comfortable with doing right now. To me, it's having faith. I just think the people that are really willing to jump into the unknown right now have so much more, not just optimistic, positive energy, but will regret later if they don't do that now. They aren't willing to let go now. Because remember, I think I said in the reading that we did towards the end of the year, the first time, and then it repeated a little bit the second time, but I remember it being slightly different. It was slightly different. It was different. It was. The theme was, generally speaking, by the end of the year, you are not going to feel like you're in the right place. If particularly you don't get on board, even if it's slow, because it was slowing down, or they want the change supposed to happen faster. But the feeling of being uncomfortable, like we could stay, quote unquote, stay where we are, but you're just going to feel like you don't belong there. So doing that shift now is easier to do, right? So like, it was a harsher perspective. I remember in the very first time I read for the year, where it it was like a band-aid rip. Let's just rip it off. Let's just yeah. get rid of all the old, focus on the new, focus on the unknown, focus on the things that we want to dream and accomplish that are not even in our peripheral right now. But then when we reread it, it was about almost a little bit of a warning. And I don't really like to read that way. That's not my jam to have a negative tone, but it just felt a little bit like this warning of if you don't do that, you're just going to feel isolated. You're just going to feel uncomfortable. You're just going to feel like everything else has changed around you and you didn't align with that. So either way, something's ending, right? I get that. I think I can see how regardless of where things end up, Mm -hmm. that feeling of isolation, because you feel like you have to hold so fast Mm -hmm. to that belief system that you had. Really, the growth is release that and go to where the dialogue is, where Mm -hmm. the integration could be. That's Mm -hmm. hard, especially if your belief system has been so embedded here. Because yeah. we're talking foundational things like value. Yeah, exactly. What we, what we learned when we grew up to right now, even if we went against how we grew up, even if we went against how we were taught, there's still a conviction to being rebelling against that. You're That's still true. holding a value to it. So if you look at that now, when I was saying that the rose colored glasses are a little thick, I think because even if people have a strong conviction, what they're really eliminating is openness. Right. Exactly. Yeah, on either side. Yeah. So that's the unknown piece. I think stepping into the known, opening up to something completely different that might not even be in our realm right now is actually what you're supposed to be seizing. And that's why conviction and value systems right now have a very tainted view because no matter what, it's still old. Yeah. yeah. I think that divisiveness, is, and this is what we're being called to do is be divisive, make a choice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. one way or another. And that does, it keeps us in this place of fear. Mm -hmm. What if I lose? What if they win? And it just keeps you so disconnected from others versus head towards the storm a little bit. See what you can learn. See what you may be overlooking. See what somebody else's perspective might open up in your own that Mm -hmm. is unexpected. And what you think is safe is not safe. That's the other part is that Mm -hmm. playing it safe what you feel is going to keep you protected, that just no matter what, with whatever you believe, that is actually an illusion. Hearing now more and more, which I'm beginning to resonate with is it doesn't matter who wins because it's not about that at all. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. about how do we really look at our belief systems mm-hmm. and grow from those and grow towards each other and collaborate in what we want to grow together moving forward. Like that doesn't feel like fear to me. That feels like optimism and hope Mm -hmm. and growth. That's the potential that's in front of us. If it is get it slightly differently. And also I think, I mean, I'm not a political person. It's hard for me to talk about politics in general, but I do think that we place a lot of value on being represented outside of ourselves. And I think that is not the right way because I think it's a reflection of our society, but I don't think it's a reflection of spirituality or a reflection of common good or a reflection of the collective. It's a reflection of the human condition. It was an aha for me. Totally. Me too. Yeah. And the more that you can go within and get to know yourself and then be open once you really understand you to listen and get to know others on that soul mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. 
and what you said, it's like we put too much on others to represent us when we need to represent ourselves. And not look for the differences. I just think expectations are hard when we place so much on other people. We place so much versus ourselves, we place so much on other people to fulfill them. And it's, I don't think that's any different with the politician or the government. Or I guess our spouses, our children, our best friends, right? Right. It's what's the expectation of yourself first, because I think that's what really affects, or at least what I almost trying to teach. And when I do tarot is that it needs to start there. Like you need to have that detachment. You need to be able to fully be in happy, regardless of outcome, because that's really what true fulfillment is. And where power is, yeah. That is exactly what we needed to hear right now, Michelle. I have my tarot cards here too. Tarot always has something. To <laughs> yes. Let's keep it simple. That's the feeling I have. Like feeling the general energy of, I guess you could say, the election, the climate, social climate, culturally, particularly here, since we're obviously in going to be thrusted into a direction that a lot of people will not enjoy, one way or the other. Let's see what we're supposed to align to energetically about this time. Oh, I love this. Exactly what we were just talking about. Okay. Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is all about infinite possibilities. Oh, wow. Meaning that the energy isn't about it being solid, isn't about it being the foundation isn't set. The course is not set. The seed is not planted. It's about it being still in the ethereal realm of potential. What is possible? What could we dream? What could we create? What could we do as a society, as an individual? And what are we going to do with that energy when we are in that place, let's say after the election, when we're supposed to be in a restart, we're supposed to be in a place of, okay, what's next? So I love what I, this connecting with what I was just saying, because the openness is, I think, what I was meditating on the most when I was thinking about what we we're going to talk about and what the feeling mm-hmm. and what I get individually with clients is everyone has become so closed. Like their convictions are so strong. Their values are so strong. And we're taught that. And I get that those have strength and weight and beauty to it to be strong in your conviction. But at the place where we don't remain open is where those convictions fail us. So our time with Michelle went on longer because she was gracious enough to do a tarot reading, a short tarot reading for all of us, for the collective, for the message. And if you'd like to see it, you can watch it on YouTube and that's youtube.com slash at the seeking center. And it's so validating and hopeful. And we hope that you take time to watch it. I love Michelle's energy so much and it always shines in the sense that you never know what you're going to get from her in a way. She's always tapped into that energy of authenticity, which I just love so much. And I think even without her taking one card out of her deck, she is able to tap into sort of that universal wisdom that we're all looking for. It's like, what's the higher power here? And reminds us to look for that and that our higher team of people, however we want to look at them, are out there. So if nothing else, always remember that there's so much more that's going on above our heads at a soul level that we don't know. And that should give us some peace and certainty in knowing that we're being loved and cared for as well. It's all being orchestrated in an amazingly divine way. So true. And we got to meet with Michelle on Halloween, which for those that have listened to Michelle before or know her, It is her Super Bowl. And so she got to be her most witchy self, literally, on that day, tapping into what we all need to know right now. And it was so profound and so helpful. So thank you, Michelle. Now you're going to hear from another soul sister, Amy Robbins, who is both a clinical psychologist and a medium. She's just so wise and very tapped in. And so her message is so helpful. When I think about this for me, because I always come back to, okay, what's going to make me and frankly, my patients, right, who are coming to me and talking about this. It is about seeing yourself in this bigger picture and finding things that matter to you that impact someone else. So finding something meaningful, it might be something simple as calling a friend and going for a walk 
buying the person behind you in the line at Starbucks a cup of coffee, just showing and connecting to the parts of ourselves that in this big world of things, there's really not a lot of control that any of us have, right? Regardless of what side you fall on, you might have done canvassing or gone out or done things that were important to you that felt like you were making a difference. Don't stop doing those things. Keep doing those things to remind yourself of the goodness of humanity, because I think what we see is all that's bad in humanity. And I think when we come into our own everyday lives, it's usually pretty good. Like the genuine connections we have with the people we love or even the people that we don't know that we might just be passing here and there. Take the time, look people in the eye and do things that matter to you and things that make a difference in this world. And you get to decide what that is for you. I know what it is for me. I know what makes me feel like a valuable contributor to this larger existence. But if you're only looking at how this is going to impact you and what it's going to mean to you, it's going to feel very heavy and very lonely and very hard, no matter which side you fall on. And I think it's critical that you find something that matters and you connect with that and you do that and you put that into the world because that's going to have a ripple effect and it's going to make a difference. And those are the things that take us out of this feeling of small, out of control self and bring us to this space of we can impact one another and we can do it in negative ways or we can do it in positive ways. And there's ways to do it in really positive, small ways every single day that make a difference. This is a time when we tend to feel disempowered because of all of that energy out there. And it is a way to take the power of ourselves back for good. I love taking those little steps. And we should be so much more than every four years we're paying attention to something like this and doing something about it or not. This should be ongoing for each and every one of us to be contributing in ways that matter to us and that make some sort of ripple impact into the world. Because it does remind us of our deeper connection to all that is. And I think at the core, that is spirituality. And that is what we're all seeking is we're seeking some sort of meaning, some sort of larger meaning and belief that we are bigger than just ourselves. And that's where I think real health comes from is that connection. Yeah. It's the unity mindset. I love that. With Amy, I always feel like I'm getting that duality, right? Of someone who's really speaking to us almost from a scientific grounded level, but then also allows us to go above into that more universal source level. And that's why her messages, I think, are so resonant with me because she's not afraid to go a little out there, but really at her core, she's giving us really practical ways of looking at all the things we've been talking about, which is fear and uncertainty. And we're so glad that she's part of this conversation for us because she just brings a voice of wisdom, like you said, that I think we need. Yeah. And that message really is very tangible. It's something that we can all do and looking for those little small ways that connect us all and bring us hope. And now we're talking to another soul sister, Jamie Breeze, who really has walked the walk leading into this in navigating uncertainty in a way that most of us may never, honestly. She lost her home in a wildfire in these last few months and has really had to tap into having faith. And her message is so important. What I've really recognized in facing traumatic experiences, adversity, and trauma, whatever that may be, we can feel really alone. And it's a time where we can start questioning faith and what is really out there. And it feels very scary and lonely. But what I've learned going through what I've been through is it may feel lonely because your spirit guides and your angels, they're off fighting these battles behind the scenes for us. And so it might not feel they're right there, but it's because they're doing this crazy amount of spiritual work to get things back into alignment for us. And it goes, you know, the poem 
for prints in the sand where there's only one set of prints. It's because God or whoever you believe in, the source energy is carrying you through those difficult times. So when people are experiencing the, seeing something like this, I think if we can just remember to try and take a minute and sit with that knowledge and knowing that the spiritual realm never leaves us. It may feel like they are, but they are 100% have our back. And the other message I really wanted to share is your loved ones, spirit guides, angels, your whole team on the other side hears you. Whether you're verbally speaking, whether you're saying it in your mind, there's been so many mediumship readings I do and I'll pull a loved one from the other side in and my client will say, I asked them to be here today. They are hearing that message and they are coming through. Your messages are always heard and received from the other side. So if you are going through a traumatic time or some trials and tribulations in your life, try and reach out and know and trust that the messages are always heard. That's so special. I haven't thought of that. I think we're so grounded in the earth right now and the noise that sometimes I think we forget that we can just literally offer up all of that to our guides, angels, whoever, whatever it is that we call it, and let them help fight those battles or fight those worries and fears for us. We're not alone. That is so helpful. Yeah, and that's what they're there for. And there's been so many times I've heard them say, they're not asking me enough. Give me the worries. Give me the fears. We have free will on this planet. And that's a beautiful thing, but we get ourselves into trouble with that. And our guides and angels want to step in more, but we've not given them the permission. Sure, there's divine intervention. Absolutely. But if we want to have extra help and support, all you got to do is ask. I hope everybody watching or listening hears that. And you all have support teams. You all have them. So ask, especially now. And Jamie just went through something extremely traumatic where she lost her house in a fire. Her whole community is being rebuilt now. And so we know you just went through this. You had to rely on faith, on asking for help and that knowing. And here you are a few months later, Karen and I, we've seen you from the beginning of that time and you've come back to yourself in these months. And it doesn't mean that it hasn't been unbelievably hard and really mm -hmm. strip you to your core. But having that faith has gotten you through. Yeah, because I remember telling you ladies, last time we spoke, I had to make a decision. I had to be a victim or continue my faith and understanding that there is something bigger and this isn't the end of my life. So I put full trust and faith in the other side and I think that's what everyone needs to try and do. As hard as that may seem, we may seem like a victim and why me? And it's hurtful. I'm not saying it's easy at no. all, at all. But if you can find a glimmer of that, that will propel you forward. That image of the footprint. Thank you for reminding me of that. That's one of my favorites. I love that too. And when you were talking earlier about spirit guides, one thing that occurred to me too, that we can do again, it's like little empowerments is if you do feel alone and you feel disconnected and divided based on people who may have a different perspective than you call upon their angels and guides too. let them get together on a higher level and call upon that for energetic connection. When we can, as physical humans do it, maybe looking at looking above our own selves for them to align and help us see each other again. Absolutely. Thank you, Jamie. Oh. We needed to hear it. So thank you. Jamie, I think reminds us all, so many of us have been through serious life experiences, which is why we do tend to feel super passionate about some things and really want to make sure that we can guide the world back on track. And of any of us, she's lost her home so recently and could have easily been that type of person to not be in the love as much as she is, not be in the faith that she is. And it took her a moment. I love the fact she shares her story that it wasn't easy to do and it's continuing to be her journey of getting back there. That said, her message of how to come back to center and how to come back to that belief that everything will be okay is really resonant from her because she's really been walking the walk. 
And to remember that we are always being carried. I know I needed that reminder. And for those who missed her story, you can actually listen or watch on YouTube or listen to her podcast on Seeking Center. We'll have the link in our show notes to that. And now we have another precious Seeking Center guide, Akashic Beck. Hello, everyone. This is Akashic Beck. I'm an Akashic Records reader, numerologist, hypnotherapist, intuitive guide, and energy healer. And I'm here today to share with everyone just some thoughts and maybe some tips on how they can navigate through times of uncertainty. I know we've been through the gamut <laughs> as the collective, and we have witnessed a lot of unsettling things. And in my energy work, I noticed that a lot of people struggle with anxiety. And that was one of the things I wanted to talk about today was was what anxiety actually is. It's a fear of the future, right? But it's also this heavy need, heavy desire to control your circumstances and to have a definitive outcome. And whenever we allow that prevalent need to be our driving force, that's when we're just a shoe in for anxiousness, right? And it's actually really disempowering. And the reason why we are so dysregulated within the scope of anxiety is because we tie our emotions to outcomes. Our emotional body is our driving force. It is the basis of everything that we manifest, everything that we're able to create. And so as we feed into these lower vibrational emotions, we perpetuate stories, we perpetuate mindsets, habits, drama in relationships, etc. But when we are able to practice mindful neutrality, which is not disassociation, by the way, but it's just a pulling back and then being able to observe something as if we are not connected to the situation whatsoever, we are able to take our emotions out of the equation. This allows us to gain greater access to our intuition. Whenever I'm doing energy healing on people and they have a lot of anxiety, I see, it, I call it the floating head because it's like, all of this stuff going on in the headspace, all this mental chatter, all of these racing thoughts and this clamoring, right? So whenever we are able to pull back and not take on any of these things, we are able to look at it clearly. It actually connects our head back with our body and we're able to connect to our intuition because the intuition is within the physical body. So this allows us to honor that part Part of ourselves, it puts us in a space of possibility rather than a more chaotic space. And then also looking at the influence of the past. And we are moving into this really powerful time. We are literally moving into a new epoch of time. We are becoming more evolved humans. And as we go through this evolution, the structures and the systems and all of the things that we've known our entire life are falling apart because they have to, because that is the natural order of things. And I think over identifying with these things is causing us a lot of grief. And we're grieving things as they're happening or before they even happen. And we negate the realm of possibility because we think we're so conditioned by what we've always known. And mindful neutrality allows us to pull back and operate out of that space of neutrality where creation happens. So it's just something to think about. It can seem scary, it can seem painful, but it's just necessary. And the influence of the past, it's important to honor that, but we don't have to stay there. We've evolved for a reason. I don't want anyone to fear your natural evolution. And I want you to find that peace within yourself because as you are able to connect with that inner peace, you're able to move forward, you're able to operate out of a higher frequency and a more, I guess you could say, empowering mindset. Just when you see Akashic Beck, talk about light. That is the first thing that I always think of when I see her. And so she's one that I think continually gives us an example of what tapping into light actually looks like and feels like and how you can translate that into practical things to actually do. Akashic records for some may feel a little woo. We love them because they are a higher view of why we're all here, which is what we all need right now. And I think that Akashic Beck gives us that perfect 
balance of, yes, there's a higher power. There's a higher reason why we're doing all of this stuff, why we're going through all of it, and then how to translate it into really practical things that we can do day to day. Yeah. And thank you back for the message because we needed to hear that right now. And now we have Michelle Brock, past life regressionist, intuitive soul sister. Wait till you hear her message. Hi, my name is Michelle Brock, and I am a spiritual life coach who specializes in past life regression. And I think I have something unique to offer as insight about the period of time that we're in here on planet Earth, which is very complicated and feels very uncertain for all of us. The reminder that I'd like to give all of you is that history moves in cycles that the past really shows up today in the present with the idea that we need to heal the past and resolve the issues from before, whether it's in a past life or your childhood, any trauma you've experienced in order to move forward into a new future. But that new future is not determined. The future is our creation. So the more healing we can do, the more surrendering we can do, and the more understanding we can do about history, about where we've been before, how we got to where we are today, and then deciding who we want to become in the future can be a really powerful practice. So as we deal with these really uncertain times, I want everyone to remind themselves that this too shall pass. We've been here before. We are evolving, we're growing, we're trying to become better beings, and we learn by doing. So we have chosen this lifetime right now here on planet Earth. We all decided to be here. We signed up for this in order to participate in the evolution of our consciousness and creating a new and better society. So this is not a time to sit on the sidelines as overwhelming as it might feel. Get out there, spend time in nature if you need to feel as grounded in yourself and in your own choices. Try to use your intuition as a guide, but that these times today are squeezing us. They're pushing us because we are supposed to evolve. We're supposed to change. This is a process that is meant to be, and we're all in it together. So hang on. And this is going somewhere. I promise. Michelle, we so needed to be reminded of that. Thank you for connecting us in ways that we forget. Yeah. Michelle's message always has been, remember that which you are against now could have been you in a prior life. And if we can take a little bit of that into every judgment that we make about anyone, if that can be just a core reminder to all of us is that we have all lived so many different lifetimes that some of us just don't remember and have been through so much trauma. And so in any person that may disagree with you or seem different than you, there's always a universal connection of sameness and that we're all human. So just a reminder that look for what you may not see in someone that you don't know well. And there might be something that is also a reflection of you there. It might be something that you need to know. So I love that Michelle always brings us back to reminding us of that. Yeah, I agree. And now we have growth coach and intuitive Amy Mewson with a powerful message. One of Robin's favorite expressions, which I also love is you are the energy that you bring to the room. And so no matter what is going on in that room, you still can bring your own energy to it. And that can be open and receptive and a calming force as well. Oh, I think so. That's very nervous system calming. Yeah. And I think either way, it's what you were saying, Amy, it's also, yes, we're all making a choice, but then how do we all come back to center and truly believing that there's the good in everyone, no matter what side they're on or how different they may feel from our own beliefs that at the core, we are all people that really have goodness in us. And how can we activate that goodness as opposed, like I have many sides in me and they're not all shiny, clean and bright. Some of them are judgy and some of them are negative. And so we're all human. Yeah. There's the best of us and the worst of us. 
So how can we activate within each other and in the country, the best of us? Yeah, we are talking on Seeking Center. And I think most people listening know we talk about your soul. And so how do you come back to that level too? We are here having a human experience. That's a given. And yet we all are these souls that come in to learn and come in from a place of love. So it's reconnecting with that too. The original template I believe with all my heart is love. It's not hate. It's it's not like a template of hate that we came in wired to hate. I don't think that's true at all. So I feel like remembering that and just even with Mm -hmm. us having this conversation and reminding people of that. It's helpful because we know that things may feel really uncertain right now, but the truth is, in my opinion, things are always uncertain. And they're always changing. And yeah, we have an illusion of control, I think. And we do a great disservice by not truly welcoming everyone to the table, even when it's hard, even when it's scary. And because that's, to me, the beautiful part of the United States is e pluribus unum from many, one, that we have to have the many. That means none of us can be, should be shut out. All the good ideas, all the differing opinions, all the, I never thought of it that way. That's interesting that you think of it that way. Even if you still stick with your view and your party, at least you considered everything. Yeah. And I think we've been really looking at everything from every point of view. I think we've been trying to see two sides to the coin and really try our best to understand so that we can have some alignment and community and conversation with optimism versus fear that Mm. our country Mm -hmm. has made it through many generations of change. It really started on change. And it started from very differing viewpoints and priorities. And when I'm high enough up to see two sides of the coin, and just the vast similarity of you're saying you're worried about democracy, and you're saying you're worried about democracy. And you're saying that you're worried about the Constitution. So are you. Same. Obviously, it can't be that everyone's a threat to democracy. That's right. So where can we go? Oh, we're all scared about the same things, but from a different angle. And when I'm my highest self, I see it so clearly that... We're all playing out a very similar script just from the other side of the table. And so I was literally just thinking, Amy, that we've always said, and we all know, we've chosen this time to be here for a very specific reason to play a very specific role. Oh, I love that, Karen. Yeah. And so how is that calling you? And can you see that higher purpose for why? Mm. Yeah. Now I have goosebumps in the presence of truth. Yes. I think that's why we're doing this episode today, because this is about how we hold hands together. No matter what. No matter what. Let's hold hands together and move forward. I have family members where we have very different viewpoints and what we want. Mm -hmm. And we have made a pledge that we won't drop hands no matter what. And I can feel that strength. And there was a beautiful article today from somebody that said, Don't break relationships over elections. Just don't do that. We can't. No, it's challenging to be our higher selves. It is. Lower frequency is, come on, it's like eating junk food. It's so much easier. It's temporarily gratifying. (laughs) Get a rush. And lower frequency has its charm. And I think higher frequency is like nutrition. It's sustaining. It's healthy. It's well-being. It's a longer-term gratification sometimes than a short-term gratification. That is so true. Thanks for sharing today. Thank you for pointing that out, Amy. We needed that reminder that we're all made up of different aspects of ourselves, and we can choose. We have the choice to pick the hopefully what we would think is the better aspect of ourselves and how we can come together, even at these times with family and friends who we may have differing beliefs with. But Mm -hmm. if we can actually be open and listen, it's It's the listening. I think it's the listening. That's what I've been learning in talking with other people. It's not about even coming to common ground. Mm -hmm. It's just about listening. That's right. And hearing and acknowledging a point of view that's other than your own. And sometimes that's the biggest leap of faith that you can take, but sometimes that's the place where you can really change and grow. So being open to that is important. So thanks, Amy, for reminding us of that. And now we have Jess Leone, 
intuitive best friend. She really is your no BS best friend. Having community, having spaces like this matter. And so if you don't have a space, if you don't have a community, I would say, regardless of what happens, if you have the right people in your life, you can get through anything. Mm -hmm. And so taking this time to find your people, to follow your own internal breadcrumbs of where you might be led to find these said people, to find those answers that you need. I find that you can always do that in the reflection of somebody who cares about you, somebody who loves you, because anything outside of us, we can't control. We can't control our external circumstances, but we can control how we respond to those things. And so being good, being happy within ourselves, loving the people in our life, loving them well, and just worrying about our four walls, the things that are contained within our animals, our loved ones, our, our family, our friends. It matters if we love those people and they love us. And so knowing that if we can have that and focus on that, if everyone just focused on our four walls, we would then be able to just focus on each other and love each other. And that's at the end of the day, that is the only thing that matters is love, true love. I was getting the, the Beatles song in my head when you're, all you can get is love while you were. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah. It well, actually makes me want to cry because- me too. It's so true. And you said that so clearly. And that is what matters. It's so easy to get caught up in all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, that's what matters. And if we send that love out, no matter what's going on, it's going to unite us and it's always going to come back to us. Always that's back. always the best thing to do in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Is to tune into that love. Thank was, you. Thank that's you. what I needed right now. I love the, the feistiness that Jess has brought to our conversations and really being able to call it like she sees it without any BS. I think it's back to where we started this conversation and making sure that we're keeping it real for everyone and making these conversations being about real experiences and how to really use them in your real life. So she does that. She brings it home. She does. And for those who don't know her yet, you will. We have a podcast coming up with her in the next few weeks. And I love what she says. And it's a perfect way to end this episode really in community because it really comes back to that. It comes back to how do we hear each other? How do we see each other? How do we come together no matter what? And we're better together. And that's the truth is most of us are coming from a place of love and coming from a place of our light. So the more that we can see that light within all of us, the better this experience on the earth right now is going to be for us. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that everyone listening and everyone watching can walk away feeling more hope, feeling more peace, feeling more centered as we navigate these next few weeks and months. And really at any time you are feeling uncertain. We hope you found these different tools and whether they're words or they're visuals or they're mantras, we hope that they can help you feel better, be better, see each other better. That's the goal. And just remember, sometimes the biggest role that you can play in this life, in this world is just being your own light. It doesn't mean you have to do even anything like that power you have of infusing the world with just this open, listening, living light can change the world, really. It is that simple and yet so powerful. And we appreciate you taking the time to listen or to watch. And we just send you love and light for real. And we'll have links to everybody's websites and how to follow them and or work with them in our show notes. So thank you so much for listening. We're sending you so much love and light.